at the Bespoke Bike Show in Lee Valley Velo Park in London. This show's amazing. There's so much cool custom bike tech here. A lot of it from small frame producers that you just don't see anywhere else. There's so many nice paint jobs I've spotted already. I'm gonna go find them and I'm gonna show you in this video. Regular viewers of the channel will be familiar with the beautiful work of Tom Sturdy who makes uh, titanium bikes in his shed and uses additive manufacturing and 3D printing of titanium to make phenomenal creations. This is really special. So what he's done is make a TT bike out of titanium. Now look at this chain set that's just absolutely beautiful. The crank arms uh, additive manufacturing, so 3D printed. Uh, the chain ring itself is machined, but just beautiful titanium, absolutely everywhere. Obviously one by, because that's faster on a TT bike, it's more aerodynamic. Um, but then when you look at the titanium frame itself, these are actual uh, titanium tubes. These haven't been 3D printed, but the way in which they're constructed together is absolutely beautiful with the, the welds. And then you've got this incredible finish, which is uh, a special anodized finish that Tom has painstakingly practiced uh, over, over many years to be able to do this. He says it's very difficult and the way you achieve this finish is by adjusting the voltage during the anodization process and in doing so you get sort of different levels of anodizing happening but to get this beautiful fade throughout the frame, oh it's, oh, it's absolutely exquisite. I think it's incredible. Uh, the cockpit on this bike is brilliant as well. So just look at the, the sort of 3D printed uh, bars and uh, stem here and how it beautifully integrates in it. It almost looks like carbon, but obviously it's not, it's titanium. The bars, super narrow. They're just 30 centimeters wide, nice and narrow and aero. I like that. And then he's made these special grips here, just 3D printed those to make the SRAM brake levers integrate seamlessly in and make it a bit more ergonomic. And then we've got a watch shop uh, cockpit on there as well. But yeah, as TT bikes go, and I love TT bikes, this is beautiful and just looks really cool. Oh, I'd love to have a go riding it. You can see the machine chain ring on the back side here, and there's just other nice little anodized details throughout the frame to sort of make it all in keeping with the rest of the, of the finish. So you've got the nice little anodized bit on the bottom bracket, the jockey wheels, uh, 3D printed as well, and they look great with the same color. And all in, it's pretty light. So Tom says that he's weighed it, and it's 8.1 kilograms, as it is here without pedals, which, uh, whew, that's pretty impressive. That's lighter than my TT bike. I love the Bespoke Bike Show because you just see stuff that you don't see anywhere else and there's so many sort of custom finishes and intricate and beautiful details that you see that are just kind of really inspirational that you then want to see on other bikes and this is a great example, this is called a, a Steyr uh, OMG, it's, it's Steyr's sort of uh, non-suspension mountain bike and this one in particular has been customised by a guy called Lewis Toghill and it's absolutely beautiful. I've never seen a bike frame like this. So it's Columbus uh, tubing, but then it's been copper plated. Uh, so you can see the beautiful copper finish here. I don't want to touch it with my fingers to put finger marks on it, but it's, it's been polished, it looks exquisite. But then this bit here is, is making a sort of aesthetic feature out of copper oxide. So they've then sprayed on chemicals and acid and all sorts of stuff on here. I'm guessing a bit of nitric acid and it's created uh, this beautiful copper oxide uh, finish with the green hue coming through and bits of gold. It just looks absolutely beautiful. The way it sort of then transitions in, into the shiny copper. I, I've never seen anything like this, but it, it's, I, I absolutely love it. And then how you've got the beautiful copper logo that they've clearly masked off for where it says stayer on the side. But there's other just really nice cool details throughout this build. So look at the top cap here, it's like, sort of hammered, um, has a nice sort of uh, industrial finish to it. And then down here, there's even like engraving just on the stays uh, as they stick out there. There's just little details here and there and the nice contrast as well with the sort of the, the polished uh, silver crank set. Really nice. But I mean, yeah, get some big bike packing bags on here, go on an adventure, I'm all, oh, I'd be all over it. Jay Laverack are a brand known for their beautiful titanium frames and they've got a concept bike here called the Curve 3 which is designed to be the ultimate sort of urban commuter 
sort of bike and it's been designed in conjunction with uh, a guy called Gary Barker who is an ex-sculptor from Aston Martin so sculpting out cars out of clay and beautiful forms and so that's part of why this bike has such an interesting form to it because the sort of aesthetic part of it is is uh, you know really really important to him and, and the design so you've got this nice curve structure here which is quite difficult to do in sort of curving titanium tubes and then welding them together like that but it means that you get the light integrated beautifully into the the back of the the tube here and then the front light and these are actually internally routed to a dynamo so it's not just aesthetic it's not just nice lines and a pretty looking bike it's very very functional you've also got these custom uh, carbon mud guards which have been designed specifically for the bike but they look so good mud guards often don't look that great do they I mean like, they're not very cool or fenders if you're American but these just look like they're supposed to be there and that the, the fit and finish of them is absolutely brilliant and then on the cockpit area we've got wing mirrors now wing mirrors often deemed not very cool but again this bike was designed to have wing mirrors on and they're an integral part of the design they look cool they look like they should be there and they're really functional actually as well. So you've got narrow bars on the cockpit because that's useful for weaving in and out of traffic and bullhorn bars as well. And then these mirrors are actually held in place by these nice custom made 3D printed brackets that hold them there so they don't move. And then here you've got really nice leather grips on the bullhorn bars. These were actually, Gary actually still has mates at Aston Martin and he tells me that these have been um, design, well, made by one of the, the upholsterers at Aston Martin. So really nice leather, hand stitched to sort of fit there and then hold the wing mirror bracket in place. It's really cool, I really like it. So to finish the build we've got DI2 shifting with Shimano GRX drivetrain uh, and hydraulic disc brakes and then also you've got a Brooks carbon saddle on there. Really nice, big nice uh, Panaracer Gravel King tyres, so big chunky tyres for going on or off road. And one thing about this particular sort of frame design means you lose that saddle height adjustability of having a normal seat post, but it doesn't matter because this is a prototype and it's been custom made for Gary the designer so it's already set at the exact height that he needs it. Another bike with a brilliant finish on it is this, it's, it's called the Splat which is pretty appropriate um, and it's a Bicycle Academy bike so you may have seen the Bicycle Academy before in some of our videos, they're based in Froome, they teach people how to weld bikes um, and make bikes uh, and also make them themselves but this one absolutely brilliant so it's a it's a gravel bike but uh, yeah just look at this it's like a, a sort of Jackson Pollock style paint design on there but you've still got some of the brushed steel coming through in places oh, I really like it I think it looks it looks really good I think it's really cool for a gravel bike to have a finish like that because it's one that kind of with rough and tumble and getting scratches it kind of adds to it it doesn't you know a nice sleek uh, clean paint job when it gets a scratch it can sometimes look a bit rubbish but yeah this ideal for gravel really like it I've spotted something really cool which is the Mythos stand now Mythos is a fledgling component brand that's been born out of Metron advanced equipment what's Metron advanced equipment I hear you ask well it's the engineering consultancy and equipment manufacturer that's uh, set up by Dimitris Katsanis, who has, well, when you tot it up, 91 gold medals at the Olympics and three hour records uh, to his name using components and bikes that he's worked on and designed. Knows his stuff, so check out some of the cool stuff they got over here. So they're doing loads of uh, additive manufacturing at the moment, 3D printing titanium and scalmalloy, um, and they've actually recently worked on the hour record bike that Dan Bigham and Filippo Ganna used in the hour record. But here are some of the sort of cockpits that they use. So this is uh, one of Ganna's base bars that was from the Rio Olympics on his pursuit bike, very narrow and just fully 3D printed titanium, so also incredibly light. This is Dylan Van Barla's cockpit off his Pinarello Belide. You can see that again very narrow with these custom extensions, really cool. Uh, this one, actually you notice the intriguing shape here and the, the different shaped bars. This belongs to Sarah Story, or Dame Sarah Story I should say, um, from the Paralympics. And they're looking to actually start making 3D printed custom uh, cockpits uh, as a one piece bar and stem. Now this is under the brand Mythos. The advantage of this, and there's one here, 
this is a Most Talon, uh, which would be from a Pinarello F12. Um, it's incredibly light. This is 3D printed titanium and then polished. This is lighter than the carbon one, but the other advantage is that it means that you can have it completely customized to whatever shape you want. So you can have the width completely customized, the shape of the drops, the length of the stem. It's not going to be cheap. It's going to be a real premium product. But if you want absolute customization, this is the way to go. Really cool. Prove is uh, another small frame producer that's making uh, titanium bikes and then using additive manufacturing. They've actually done some work with, with Tom Sturdy, but you can see on this mountain bike they've done here, what an amazing anodized finish this is. Again, not the blue that we, we saw previously. This is now a green fade, but looks, oh, I love these finishes. They look incredible. But also they've got a head tube here that I can show you. And what this really highlights to me is how additive manufacturing is once painted, it makes sort of, well, alloy parts, titanium parts, it makes them look like they're carbon. You can do shapes now that just weren't possible a few years ago. So if you look at this, uh, this top cap here that I'm turning with my fingers, you can see what a complex shape that is, but that's titanium. And then if I turn this here, you can see the additive tube and how it has this honeycomb structure inside to help build it and support it when it's made so you have an unusual cross section and not just a round tube that we're used to with with bikes made from alloys but yeah proper proper cool you may have seen Manon's excellent video on custom painting and in that she used custompaints.com they're here with some really cool stuff so Custom painting, I, oh, I love it. Like, I really want to have a go at doing one myself because there's so many amazing colors and they're pretty easy to use from a, from a can. But some really cool things down here I want to show you are their ice effects paints. So this is actually involves two colors. You put down a base coat and then you use this ice effects uh, liquid on there, which creates this sort of pattern. Then you apply the second color that you want. I've seen this type of paint job used on Colnago bikes. We've shown them on the channel before, um, and it just looks incredible. There's actually GTN Italia's Colnagos. They've, they've got this ice effects paint job in a red, and it looks brilliant, but I didn't know that you could actually go and do it yourself at home. That is proper cool. There's marble effect paint jobs as well, and they also have these chrome coat paints, which are kind of that sort of iridescent paint that changes depending on the angle of the light into different colors. Sort of like we used to get on the old TVRs back in the day. But, oh, really, really, really nice paint jobs. Just seeing all these different colors and effects and finishes, it's, oh, it's inspired me. I want to custom paint something now. So yeah, well, subscribe if you want to see that happen. I had to show you this. This is a bike by Lord, who are a small independent uh, custom frame builders based in Cardiff in Wales. They make entirely bespoke uh, tailor-made steel bicycles. This one, beautiful. Like, look at this paint job. Again, it's that sort of Jackson Pollock sort of, sort of splat design, but it's got this nice sandstone uh, sort of matte uh, sort of base coat, and then the colors are then splattered over the top. But I really like that. I've not seen a paint job like this before that, that sort of is this sort of color palette, but I really like it. I think it works really well as a gravel bike and is really beautiful. Let us know what you think about it because yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I, yeah, I, I, I quite like this one. It's good. Spoon Customs have got some really cool stuff on their stand. This is a bike that's been entirely hand custom painted by an artist called Sam Dunn. And she's done an incredible job. It's just so intricate everywhere. But apparently it did break her and she swore never to do a bike ever again because it was, well, so intricate, so time consuming, so laborious. But the result, stunning. Look at it. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And then we've got full Campagnolo record and Campagnolo Bora wheels on there. I mean, what a bike. But then something that's a bit more attainable is this. It's called the Spoon Sestriere. And what they've done is try to create a custom bike at a much more affordable price point because a lot of custom bespoke frames are just prohibitively expensive. So they're trying to make it a bit more mass market. It's still expensive, but considerably less than what you, you usually find. So all in, this is a completely custom bespoke frame. They reckon you can get it for about five grand. Uh, and there's custom paint options too. So the reason why they can do that is because rather than using titanium um, 
which is a common material you'll see here at the show, and also steel. They've used uh, a scandium alloy, which is cheaper, but still has the material properties required to make a really good bike. I think it's really cool. Plus, then you get this, get some of those custom uh, paints over there, and then you can do whatever you like, get your ice effect on here. Oh, that'd be sweet, wouldn't it? Nice. So there you go, the Bespoke Handmade Bicycle Show 2022. There's so much cool stuff here and so many amazing things that unfortunately we haven't had time to show you uh, in this video. But let us know out of the things we have showed you, which was your favorite, which paint job uh, you liked the best. And well, to see more stuff like this, you know what to do, subscribe, like, all that jazz. I'm gonna go catch a train now, bye.